we, we want to start with the issue of bump stocks. In your tweets recently, you seem to indicate that you would not be in favor of a ban on bump stocks. And even a lot of Republican colleagues are saying they are open to that idea. Uh, so why not? Well, first of all, we don't have all the facts in. And in fact, yesterday, one of our major assumptions about the timeline was, was totally turned on its head. And we, we don't know what firearms were used, what caliber, whether the bump stocks were actually effective or not effective. So I think we should wait for all the facts to come in. The other problem that I have with the approach that the, the speaker has proposed here is uh, I don't think that the ATF or any executive branch, for that matter, should be writing laws or changing the laws that we have written to accommodate uh, public sentiment. Frankly, the elected officials should be changing the laws if we feel that there's a law that needs to be changed. But public sentiment seems to be, there's great support for having guns, Second Amendment, but public sentiment does seem to be something needs to be done. And again, even the NRA has said, reviewing bump stocks, maybe not such a bad thing. So even in this case in Las Vegas, if that was or was not part of what aided him to kill so many people, would it hurt? Would it hurt to look at things like armor piercing bullets? You know, hunters would still have access to weapons that allow them to hunt. Well, I'm, I'm sure the Democrats will propose all sorts of legislation that are completely unrelated to the shooting that happened in Las Vegas. That's typically what they do. The problem is you can't legislate out all of the evil in this country. The, the man, the maniac there in Las Vegas that killed so many people, he was a pilot and he owned airplanes at one point in his life. He could have killed far more people by flying an airplane into that crowd than he did with the firearms. So I think it's wrong to, uh, to have the reaction that we should write laws that infringe on everybody's right to keep and bear arms. I mean, the right to keep and bear arms, it's, it's not about duck hunting or deer hunting. It's about personal protection, protecting you and your family, even if someday that means the government. And can I ask you, do you accept, accept money from the NRA and is that appropriate? Um, I have accepted money from the NRA, I am, but I am the lowest recipient in Kentucky of uh, NRA money. I think some of the senators may have received upwards of $100,000. I've received $2,000 in five years. So the, the interest that I have as the chairman of the Second Amendment Caucus here in Congress is genuine. It's a personal interest that got me involved in politics, protecting the Bill of Rights, particularly the Second Amendment. But it's also a sentiment that a lot of my constituents feel strongly about in Kentucky. I want to move on to tax reform. Uh, with the issue of tax reform, some have said, in particularly in our area, more on the Ohio side, that we have high state and local taxes, property taxes in particular. So if you simplify taxes to get rid of that and even double the standard deduction, many people will not come out ahead. Uh, do you think that would be the case? Are you inclined to vote for the tax reform proposal as we think it's going to be? You know, I'm inclined to vote for it, but we've got a shortage of details right now. This morning, I encouraged our leadership, the Speaker of the House and the conference chair, that we should put an app in the App Store that lets you see that postcard. You put it on your phone, right? This would probably be one of the most popular apps downloaded this week if it were available. And you put in the 13 numbers that you would otherwise put in on your tax form after this reform is done, and it spits out a number. It says, Paula, you're gonna save $500 under this new Republican tax plan. Or Thomas, you're gonna save $200. If we just did that one simple thing, created an app or a web page that you could go to, I think the demand for this tax package would be enormous. Of course, we need the details about where the thresholds are for those various tax, tax brackets in order to produce that app. And I'd like to see the details because that's where the devil is, but I'm supportive of tax reform. There has been a lack of details. I mean, there's been so much talk about, yes, I'll support it, no, I won't support it. And we don't know where even the brackets fall, as you mentioned. Um, when might we know that? And do you think that we're gonna see reform this year? 
I think there's a 50-50 chance you see reform this year. I hope we see those details sooner rather than later. I think they'll be favorable. There are some details that I don't hear discussed in the news that we do know about. For instance, the tax on S corporations, LLCs, and sole proprietorships is going to be reduced by 40 percent down to 25 percent. Those are the mom and pop pizza shops. Those are the machine shops in the garage that hire four people. Those are the lawn care companies that where there's only one employee and it's the owner. Those folks are definitely gonna see a tax reduction regardless of what bracket they're in. And I think that's good. I was a little bit worried about that because Washington often takes care of the big companies but it doesn't always take care of the small companies or the mom and pop shops. And I see them doing that in this tax reform from the details we've got already. Do you think it is possible that people in higher tax states are not going to benefit? You know, whenever you endeavor to make an unfair tax code fair, the people who've benefited from an unfair tax code are going to complain. And whenever you try to make it flatter, the people who benefited from an unflat tax may complain. But I think there's room in this, in the details here, to make sure that everybody gets a tax cut that's paying taxes and some people will get more of a tax cut than others. That's part of, of making it more fair. And we're almost out of time. I'll just try to get this in very quickly. The president is expected to decertify the Iran nuclear deal. Do you agree with that? And should Congress reimpose sanctions? Well, you know, I maintained back when the Corker Cardin framework passed in Congress that this is a treaty and that it requires two-thirds of the Senate. I voted present in the House. I didn't vote for it or against it because I don't think this issue belongs in the House. If you're going to do a treaty, the Constitution says two-thirds of the Senate needs to agree on it. So that's up to the President if he wants to do that. Uh, if he thinks there's a better deal to be made, let's make it. Excellent. We're out of time again. Thank you for rearranging your schedule for us today. Thanks, Paula. Oh, no problem.